So for the rest of this, you can use alphas, you can use booleans, you can uh, use geometry. Like if I wanted to put a big divot uh, in the side of his head here, we can go to BTO, the topology brush. And we can go through here and we can draw on some topology. So we can just kind of, you know, draw through here and then draw across here and just keep dividing these pieces up here. Uh, then once we have that, we can hold down Alt and we can get rid of any of these pieces we want or Alt drag to clean this up a little bit. Then we can tap off here and it's based on your brush size will give us the depth or the size of that object. Of course, we've already used Z-Modeler, so we can go through here, split mass points if we want to make this any bigger or smaller with our Z-Modeler brush. We know we can do Q-Mesh, Polygroup Island, or let's do Polygroup All. And again, you can start pulling and then hold down Shift and pull along those surface normals. If you hit D for dynamic, it'll go ahead and give you a dynamic subdivision preview. And if we turn on Live Boolean and turn this to subtractive, and let's move this down to the bottom here, you're going to see it's going to cut in. So if you wanted to do like a Crease level of two, smooth subdiv of four. You can see what that's going to look like. And again, it's live, so you can go through here. And you can move this around if you want. Turn on polyframe to see what you're doing or go into solo mode. And if you wanted to, in fact, go to the bottom here and say, you know what? Let's do an inset with the face inset polygroup ball region. You can inset this entire region and then do a Q mesh polygroup ball, hold down shift, and then do a crease PG and then hit D again. Put a little bevel in there on the bottom. That'll give you a little bit more of a complex shape here. Or like we were doing earlier, you can go through here and you can simply mask out a shape and then control tap to invert that. Hold down control alt or control and kind of clean the shape up a little bit. Control alt tap to clean it up or to sharpen it up a little bit. Hold down alt to set that surface normal. You can push this in, inflate, deflate, or like we were doing earlier, you can go through here and you can set on that corner there and you can kind of rotate it in or rotate it out. Although from this point here, I'll probably maybe go to this side and let's hold down Alt and rotate it this direction and then kind of pull that in. Control drag, control drag again. Then you kind of have an inset, little light weighted thing in there. And since we're ahead of a subtractive subtool over here, you can simply go in here to BI brush insert, grab an IMM Boolean, hit M and grab any of these and you just pull those on and get some very complex Booleans uh, going that way. You can make your own insert boolean meshes. My intro to ZBrush part 8 will take you over the basics of booleans there. Or if you have some alphas, I have some brushes in here. To kind of play around with some of these. These are just shapes from Gumroad, so I can go and grab any of these brushes here. We can kind of drag these out. Let's uh, drop that Z intensity down a little bit so you can hold down Alt. You can kind of push these in, or you can go and grab some of these alphas and see if these are going to play nicely. Now the resolution is not great on this object, because again, we're still in kind of block out phase, but if you're fairly certain uh, this is the direction you want to go in, you know, feel free to dynamesh this at a higher resolution or even zero mesh this, um, and then start adding your Boolean meshes and your alphas and stuff like that. So yeah, if you are going to start dragging alphas on here, you're probably going to want to make sure that uh, you're subdivided up, and up enough to make sure that these things make sense. Of course, you can make your own alpha brushes. You can find that on my YouTube channel as well. For this project, I'm probably just going to see what alphas I have available and just very quickly kind of put something uh, worthwhile together. And incidentally, if you did want to apply that Boolean to your mesh, like for instance, we have uh, this object here and hold down shift and turn off the eyeball. And then at the very bottom here, we have this piece here. So if I want to do actually create the uh, result of that Boolean, because right now it's just a live Boolean. If I turn off my live Boolean button, uh, you're going to see the result of that. So if you have live Boolean turned on, you can go down here and go to Boolean, turn on dynamic subdivision, hit make Boolean mesh. And then it's going to spit your U mesh out on top here. So this is your union mesh, and this is the result of your Boolean. You're going to see it maintains your polygroups in here. Um, at this point, if I'm just doing quick concept stuff, I'm probably just going to go through here and dynamesh this at a fairly high resolution and uh, call it a day and go through here and smooth this out, and uh, that'll be enough. Of course, there's a lot of different ways you can use Booleans and a little bit less of a destructive workflow, but that's probably how I would handle that.